everybody. We're going to learn how to write and name the formulas, or sorry, write formulas and names of molecular compounds. So we did ionic compounds already. Those were metals, nonmetals, or cations, anions, involving the transfer of electrons. Molecular compounds are, to me, much easier. They're much easier to name and write the formulas of. Uh, it's really pretty much what you see is what you get. All right. So with sodium chloride, you really don't know there's one sodium and one chlorine ion until you look at the charges. But in this case with molecular, there's a very easy way you can spot if you have one of an atom, if you have two, if you have seven, or whatever it is. So first, for moleculars, molecular compounds involve covalent bonding, so the sharing of electrons. So there's no transferring occurring. And for the sharing of electrons, it occurs only between nonmetals and metalloids. That's it. We're not going to be focusing on any metals here. So again, from the periodic table, if we check out all these metals, look at all these guys. There's a ton of metals on here. We're not using any of those for molecular compounds. Covalent bonds are only between these two, metalloids and nonmetals. Usually it focuses on nonmetals, all right? But metalloids are going to be in there as well. You might see boron or silicon and arsenic a few times. That's kind of it. But we're going to focus on the nonmetals. And it's only going to be nonmetals that can actually form bonds. So you're not going to have really any uh, molecular compounds with uh, the noble gases. A couple exceptions, perhaps krypton and xenon are some exceptions, but we're focusing pretty much on the reactive nonmetals. So these green guys you see on your screen right now. So to write names and formulas is actually pretty straightforward. We're gonna use prefixes when we do the names. And so we, went, we already went over in class all the different prefixes here. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, and deca. Now, wheat, I mean, you're not going to see a lot of octas, nanas, and decas, just to be honest. You're going to see mostly from like mono through hepta or even mono through hexa, but I'll do a, a seven here. No, I, I'll do a six. So that's kind of as far as I'm going to go. Um, but you might see these other ones every once in a while, but most are going to focus on the mono through, uh, through hexa, I would say, for the most part. But don't just get comfortable with those six. There's also the four other ones. And again, like we've talked about before, You'll hear these prefixes numerous times just in life in general. Again, octagon, Tetris is the reason why the game is called Tetris. Tetra is the four prefix. Die, you know, for two, try for three, mono for one, penta for five, etc. All right, <clears throat> so names and formulas. I want to do CO first. Now, again, to figure out if it's molecular or ionic for the compounds, Check your periodic table to see what kinds of atoms are being bonded together for your compound. So for this one, C and O, if you check your P table, carbon and oxygen are both nonmetals. So you're not going to be doing, you're not going to be looking for charges and ionic charges and, and valence electrons here. All right, don't. All right, a lot of people say, wait, they're both, uh, they're two negatives or like you can't get the electrons to balance. It's impossible. No, it's not. Okay. You're, you're getting too comfortable with the ionics, all right? So that's your comfort zone. Now we're, now we're changing it a little bit, all right? So if you learn how to Velcro your shoes together, now you're learning how to tie your laces. So don't try to Velcro laces together. It's not going to happen. Don't just give up. Um, it's a different way to do things. It's okay. It's life. Oh, well. So carbon and oxygen, two nonmetals. So that's how we're going to know that we're going to be using um, the rules for covalent bonding and molecular compounds. These are much easier than ionics. Just hear me out. So we got C and O. What I like to do first is I like to write the first element, carbon. All right. And then the second element, we're going to end it with I, like we did for the ionics when there were uh, when there was one atom for the uh, for the second ion for the anion. So sodium chloride. Um, the chlorine was on the periodic table. It was not a polyatomic ion. So we have carbon and oxide. So this looks a little weird though, carbon oxide. It's not a correct name. So for molecular compounds, the second element only, if there's, um, sorry, the second element always, not only, always, you're gonna put a, pre you're going to put a prefix before the element, before the ide element. So carbon, we have one oxygen. 
right up here, one atom of oxygen is a mono prefix. So I'm going to call this one carbon an oxide. There we go. There's only one carbon. I'm not going to do monocarbon monoxide. That just sounds weird. So the rule is just if the first element is all by itself, there's only one atom of it. You just call it its element name, carbon. Second element, you need a prefix before the ide element. So carbon monoxide. You've all heard of that before. So you're not going to call it carbon oxide. That's not a thing. Carbon monoxide is CO. Cool. All right, next one. S2Cl6, sort of name this one with a covalent way or molecular compound way. Again, look at your periodic table. Sulfur and chlorine, there we go. Sulfur and chlorine, they're two nonmetals. So you're not going to look up on the, at the charges for the, for the, uh, and the valence electrons and go, oh, it's not going to work. You can't put two anions together. Well, true, you can't, but these are going to bond covalently because they are two nonmetals. They both want to share electrons. They don't want to steal, or they want to both steal so they're going to try to steal as best they can. They're going to share electrons to make that bond. So sulfur and chlorine, two sulfurs and six chlorines. So if I have two sulfurs, again, just like the first one, I'm going to put sulfur first. Since I have two of them, I'm going to go up here. My prefix for sulfur, or sorry, my prefix for two is di. So I'm going to go I sulfur, so I have two of them. And then I'm going to end this one with chloride. Just like up here, it was oxide. Here is Cl, which is chlorine, so chloride. Six is hexa. Your hexagon's got six sides. So I'm going to go disulfur, hexachloride. Here we go. Done. Not too bad. <laughs> All right. So now for Formula writing, it's the formula writing is just, you know, I'd say it's easier than naming. Uh, the names get kind of long. They get kind of, you know, this, the, the, they just get kind of long. So the, the formulas are so much easier. All right. Don't think too hard about this stuff. It's not too bad. Like the names tell you what it is. Okay. They're pretty much whispering in your, in your ear, Psst, three N's and four O's. So don't get these wrong. Please don't. Um, they're, again, they're telling you what it is. So try nitrogen tetroxide. I mean, I'm not going to go into it. It says you have three ends. Tetra is four. Oxide is oxygen. So there we go. And 304. Trinitrogen. Tetroxide. It's telling you what it is. So these are freebies for the most part. Okay. And there are always going to be two words. You're not going to have like five words strung together. All right. That's just too complicated. And then finally, disulfur monofluoride. Yeah, it's just as easy as it sounds. You got two sulfurs, hence the disulfur part. Monofluoride is one fluorine. So, go. Disulfur monofluoride. That's it. And note here, the mono you don't start the word with uh, the name with mono. Just check up, check this guy out, carbon monoxide. Okay. Whenever you're not sure, just remember you exhale carbon dioxide. You don't exhale di uh, monocarbon dioxide. Okay. So never start the name with mono. Some people do, and I never understand why, because you, you've all heard of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So why would you call it monocarbon dioxide? You wouldn't. So don't do it uh, here as well. Okay. And that's that's pretty much it. And again, if you were to check the uh, nitrogen and the oxygen on the P table, they're both nonmetals. Same with sulfur and fluorine, both nonmetals. So you use the rules for molecular compounds. Great. <laughs>